All right, today we are going to be talking about growth models. Growth models as they relate to fish stocks, but these are common growth models that might relate to anything. So we are going to explore some common growth models for fish stocks, right? So we're usually talking about recruitment models, recruitment models, and there's a couple that we're going to go through. We're going to go through the Exponent, exponential model, the logistic model. We're going to go through the logistic with depensation. We're also going to go through Peloton, Pelotonlinson. Ricker, and finally, the last one we're going to do is Beverton Holt. So the video is going to have a couple different things that we do with it. We're going to explore each of these, explore and fit each of these curves, and then we're going to do an example. Uh, we're going to do an example where we get data from a figure and fit multiple models to it. So it's a little bit of a lengthy exercise, but I think it will be worth it. So what are we talking about, really? So our exponential model, usually we think of something that has a form. Right, let's just start, start here with exponential. Usually we, we think of it that it has a form of something like um, n at time t is equal to n, some initial knot, some initial time period, times the exponent of a growth rate times t, right? And so we have nt that ha has, uh, so here's our initial population. It's going to grow exponentially by some growth rate times some time, and that's going to be our numbers at time t. So we really just want to know what the derivative of this thing is. In other words, how many, for each time step, how many are we adding to it? So this equation tells us what the population is after we've added the growth at each time step. But when we take the first derivative of this thing, what would be dn? Let's just make it dn dt would just equal r times n in this case. So this is just a this is the first derivative of the exponential, which turns out just to be a, a line, a linear model. Just for notation, this is sometimes called r. Um, so we're just going to make dn uh, dt that this is just recruitment. In the in the coarsest of sense, and we're just going to call this thing R just for notation recruitment. So when we talk about a uh, exponential growth, we're going to set a parameter, a growth rate equals zero point one. We'll just say it's zero point one, and we're going to set a population value. We're going to have a fixed population value between zero individuals and hundred individuals. And if we want to know what our recruitment is at each one of these population levels R, it's going to equal R times N, which is, sorry, capital N, which is just going to be this growth rate times this vector. This is what we would expect to recruit. And so let's go ahead and plot R, I'm sorry, N and R. The X lab equal this is something like stock, stock size or population number, and Y lab equals re expected recruits. Let's put expected recruits. All right. So let's go ahead and plot this. Yeah, 
Okay, so I'll just move this up here like this. So here it is. Here's our stock size. Here's our expected recruits. We're saying that for all these different, as the stock size gets bigger, we add more and more recruits. This is the same as exponential growth. So we would at 20, we would add two, 40 would add four. So as stock size gets bigger, we add more and more recruits. This is a exponential function, even though it looks like a line, right? Because of the first derivative of an exponential function is a line. Okay, so now let's make up some recruit data, right? We're going to make up some recruitment data, and we're going to use the function called rnorm. We've used this before in previous exercises. rnorm is a normal a random number gen generator for a normal distribution. We're going to generate 101 points with a mean of r and a standard deviation equals one. So in this case, we're just gonna be making noisy data, something that you might see uh, or, or measure in the field. And then we're gonna go ahead and plot n r underscore data pch equals 20. And let's just do our x lab, y lab. So I gotta run this first, there we go. All right, so here we've made some noisy data. We've just taken our line. And so we'll put our original data, our original sort of function back on there. Points and R. So this is what we started with. We took these points and we added some random noise to it. So that's what you might find out in the environment. And what we've done in the past exercises, when we had a line like this, we'd use ordinary least squares regression. So let's just review that again. OLS, if we wanted to make a linear model, or if we wanted to know, estimate the relationship between stock size and the expected number of recruits, our linear model would include our recruit data. That's just our noisy data as a function of stock size, n. All right. We can add a line to this by using a, b, line, OLS, and our color will equal red, a line weight equal two. So our best estimate of this function Look like that. So there's our original data. Here's our statistical estimate of it. Pretty close, um, not too far off. And if you you know run this over these couple lines here over and over again, you'll see it gets slightly different things every time because it's a random number generator. So if it's slightly different than our original data, but uh, you'll get the sense of what's happening. You realize we're going to get into some more complex curves here. It's not just going to be a line it's going to be a curve and ordinary least squares assumes that you're going to use a line to fit data but of course you don't have to use a line to fit data you can use some interesting curves to fit data and so what we're going to do here is show you how to fit a line straight line not using OLS but using something called NLS so this is our nonlinear fit nonlinear least squares is a function that's called NLS if you do question mark and ls, you'll see this is a nonlinear least squares fitter. It's asking for a formula, what your data is, and I'll go through that. Um, but we're going to fit, instead of a line, some other function that's not a line. And so let's go ahead and do that. So nls, this is going to look similar. Our response is going to be our recruit data, which in this case are all these black dots. And as a function, if we are going to make an equation of a line here, implicit in here, in this formulation up here, we're going to fit some coefficient and some intercept. We're going to make that explicit now. We want to fit a coefficient a times n plus b. a times n plus b. And this is actually identical to this. In the OLS, it's assumed that you have an intercept, and it's assumed that you have a 
coefficient in front of this n, but here we're specifying which two coefficients that we want NLS to estimate. It is the slope and the intercept of the relationship between R data and n. So we're asking for the intercept, which would be where this line crosses zero, and what the slope of this line is. And what this optimizer asks for is a starting where you want us to where they want to start searching for the appropriate values of a and b. So we're just going to do a equals 1 and b equals 1. So it's saying, we're, give me a list of the things you want to fit, which is a list of a's and b's. Start at 1 for both of these and go ahead and optimize, use your optimizer to estimate what a and b are. So that's what this is. So if we run this. Okay, it finished. Now just real quick, let's just go back to OLS and you'll see that we had a fit. This was our intercept, close to zero, and what our n is. And if we type NLS now, here is our slope A. Here's our slope over here. You see they're the same numbers. And here's our intercept. So we used two different functions to estimate the, exactly the same thing. You might think, why am I doing that? Well, why not just use OLS? Well, OLS assumes a line. NLS doesn't. We're going to make this little um, formulation in here more complex, more nonlinear, and we're going to use this to fit data. So now what we have to do is make a prediction. Let's make a prediction, recruit prediction. We're going to use the function predict based on our model called NLS. So it's going to take the results of this NLS fit. We want you to look at the NLS model and let's, I want you to predict on new data. And our new data, again, is going to be a list. And that list, we're going to give the name N and N is going to equal N. That might seem odd to you, but inside NLS, right here, you'll see that we have an object called n. And so this new predict function is looking for something that's called n. It's going to plug into this equation for you, and it's going to spit out the r data. It's going to spit out the y value using these two estimates of a and b. So I just wanted to re-predict over our original values, which is 0 to 100. So that's why I have list n equals n. But if I wanted to put new data in there, say I wanted to predict from 0 to a million or 0 to 100,000, my list would be n equals some other thing. That would be 0 to 1,000 or 0 to 10,000 or 50 to 60 or something like that. But in this case, I just want to predict over the same range. i go ahead and run this. Okay. And you'll see how this works out later on. And then let's add some lines to this plot. N and our R, I'm sorry, our prediction and our color equals blue. Color equals blue. Nope. Expected thing in lines. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to put a parenthesis here. Sorry about that. There it is. So you can see the blue is essentially right on top of that red line from 0 to 100. That's where we predicted it. Um, so not surprising, it found exactly the same results. All right, so we gave you two ways to fit a line. One was ordinarily squares, where it had an assumed linear form. Um, this one, NLS, is more explicit, where we actually put in the slope and the intercept that we were going to fit. And so let's now move to, on to see how this might work in a different example. Let's do logistic growth. So we can borrow some things here. We're still going to do R and N, but logistic growth also has something K, which is carrying capacity. So this is the carrying capacity of the environment. Okay. And let's go ahead and make our recruit curve. What is this? What is the formulation of this? Well, this is going to be R times N times 
1 minus n divided by k. 1 divided by n minus k. So as n gets bigger, as n gets bigger, and if n is far below the carrying capacity, this is going to be a really small number. If n is 1, that means it's 1 over 100. This is a really small term in here. It's going to start growing really rapidly. But then at some point, it's going to hit its carrying capacity. Once n gets to 100, this term is going to be 1, which means this whole term is going to be 0, which means no recruits will be added once we get to carrying capacity of 100. So let's just see how this works out. We can just come up here and grab plot. In fact, all of this is going to be the same. Let's go ahead and plot a curve. Oh, sorry. I need to run this R. Let me start from the top here, logistic crooks. There we go. So here's our stock size. Here's our expected recruits. At first, we're adding them quickly. And then once we hit our carrying capacity, we're not adding any recruits. We're not adding any recruits. We can now make some recruit data. Remember, this is making sort of noisy data. And we can plot that on top of this. There it is. There is our noisy data. Here's our original data. And we're going to try and fit this thing. We're going to try and fit this thing. Well, what do we have to do? Just come back right up here. Well, first, let's, let's go back to the OLS model here. OLS. Try and fit this with OLS. Let's just fit OLS data as a function of n and add this AB line you'll see that it doesn't fit very well. Not a great fit here. But we might say, you know, it's really important that if we have zero stocks, that we have zero recruits. In other words, if there's no parents, there's no children. So that has to go through the zero, zero points. I'm just going to add this notation of making sure that this equation goes through the origin. That's how you would specify that. Let's run this again. Okay, so it does. So there's our best fit if we force the equation through the origin. It looks like a pretty terrible fit. And the reason why it's a terrible fit is that it's not a line. It's a logistic growth. So let's now show you how to do that with NLS. So I'm just going to copy all of this here. Okay. And right here in our new NLS function, this is what we had before, but now we have to mimic this equation right here, this equation right here. So what would that look like using A and B? Well, here's our R. So that's going to be the thing that we estimate. In this case, we're going to call it A. So this is just a placeholder, but this is the term we're going to estimate. And then what we have to do is just retype this thing. 1 minus n over b. Now you might be thinking, why are you using a and b when it's r and k here? Well, I'm just trying to be consistent between this case where we estimated an a and b term here. We we're trying to get two unknowns, a slope and an intercept. In this case, our two unknowns um, are this growth rate and this carrying capacity, b. So we know we have data. We have the n data. Um, we want to estimate that n data, stock size. We have what this is. That's our noisy scatter plot over here. And we want to estimate a and b given this sort of shape. Again, we're going to tell it to start searching for a and b at these values. And we're going to run NLS. And if we just quickly look at NLS, you'll see that a here is pretty close to our initial R value, which is great because that's how we specified the model. You can see that R recruits, our capital R recruits, was going to be this R term, this rate term. And then we have this carrying capacity term over here. That's 100. We've replaced that here with these terms that we want to fit and have NLS guess at with A and B. So our A result should look like our little r which it does, it's close to 0.1. And our B is operating like our carrying capacity here. And it's pretty close to 100. In this case, it's 
94. It came up with a best fit. Given these black data, given these uh, black points, solid points. So here we can run the prediction and add to this, and you can see how the model, the NLS uh, model, fit the data, given the noisy data that we gave it. It's a little different than sort of the original. Remember, we added noise to this, some random noise, and so that's the fit. Much Now you'll see it's a nonlinear fit, right? We're fitting the data nonlinearly instead of using a line. And we can come back through here and come back to this norm, this uh, normalizing, and we can rerun it. And you can see, rerun it a couple times. You'll see the data changes every once in a while, and you'll see the superiority of the nonlinear fit um, compared to the linear fit. And that's because we've added a much more flexible equation in here that we're asking NLS to fit. So this can be really, really powerful. All right. So that's logistic growth. Let's now try logistic growth logistic growth with depensation. With depensation. What's depensation? Well, let's just think about this for a minute. Let's first go back up here. We need these values. And then we're going to add one. We're going to add a value to this that's called nc, n under c. What's n underscore c going to be? n underscore c is going to be the critical population level below which growth is negative. Below which growth is... So the, the, the intuition for this is that in this curve, we would say the only reason you get no recruits as if there's no adults. But you can imagine a situation where maybe the population's so low or so spread out that even though there's a couple of them out there that you don't get any recruits. In fact, recruiting goes down uh, in some way, goes negative. They die off in some way. That's what's called depensation. So the form of this curve looks something like this. We're going to borrow our logistic curve here, and we're going to come down here. Now, R is not going to equal this. We're going to add a term here. N divided by NC minus 1 times this. Okay, so what's our... We're going to add... There we go. Put that in the right spot. Okay, what's our intuition here? Well, this looks, you know, you can recognize this as the leftover exponential. Here is the logistic. This is the carrying capacity turn. What's this one? Well, if n is smaller than nc, that means that this value is going to be less than 1, which means this term is going to be negative. And that negative will apply to the entire equation. We will have negative recruitment. And when n equals nc, that means that this will be 1. Minus a 1 will be 0, which means we'll have no recruitment. No recruitment. So let's see what that looks like here a second. Let's just go ahead and borrow this. and run that. Oops. Again, I forgot to overwrite here. Let's just start from the top here. Oh, NC. Oh, I have to put in what NC is. What should we make NC? Well, in this case, NC should be... I'll make it 20. Make NC 20. All right. Okay. So, this is what we said. If it's below 20, it's going to be negative, and it's, if it is 20, it's going to be zero. So that at this stock size, we have negative recruitment, and then it goes up and does our nice sort of logistic curve. So that's matching our intuition about the math. So then we can come back, and we can 
do a lot of this stuff similar. Let's go ahead and make some noisy data. There it is. And now we have to fit that curve. Got to fit that curve. So I'm just going to grab, there's no sense in doing a line on that one. You guys see why that wouldn't work. So let's go ahead and just use NLS. And we have to specify this model correctly. So we have A times N again. And now we're going to add a term. So here's our B term here. So that's going to be estimating carrying capacity. Now we got to come in here and we got to mimic this thing here. So we can just grab this and stick this right here. And let's just make this a C and make this a equals one. All right, so how do we specify this here? We have our A N, that's left over from our exponential model. Here's our one minus N over B. Remember, these A, Bs, and Cs are just the things that we want to estimate, which turn out to be R k and nc right so this is our growth rate this is k is our carrying capacity nc is our critical population level we're just denoting these things as a b and c we're telling the regressor where to start uh, searching for these and i'm just going to change these up a little bit i'm just going to turn this to 50 and maybe turn this to 10 just to show you you can use different starting points and let's go ahead and run this nls Okay, we ran it, so let's take a look at NLS. What do we get for A? Oh, it's really close to our starting R value. There it is, right? That's good. How about B? Well, it's close to 100. And how about C? That's close to 20. Pretty good. Remember, we added some noise in here, so it's not going to get it exactly. And so now we're going to run our prediction and our lines and throw it on top. And there's our fit for the, the not this, for the, the solid dots, the solid dots. And you can run this a couple times just to see how it might change, right? Because, you, because you're running a random number generator, you know, the, the points are going to be a little bit different, but you see how you would estimate um, that curve, that depensation curve. So again, really powerful. All right, let's move on to the next one. Our next one is called... Pella Tomlinson. Pella Tomlinson. Pella Tomlinson is probably the most flexible. We're going to grab these terms here. So we have R, we have RK. Uh, here's our N. But instead of an NC, we have a P, which is just a shape parameter. And you'll see where this comes out. I'm just going to call this, call P equals 2, shape parameter, Pelotomlinson shape parameter. All right, so what does the form of this equation look like? Well, we're going to come up up here and we're going to borrow, I'm not going to borrow the depensation one. I'm going to just going to go back to our logistic curve, a different formulation of this. Here we've got R divided by P times N, 1 minus N over K raised to the power of P. Raised to the power of P. All right. And then just to show you what the plots of these things look like, Just run these here. There you go. So run them a couple different ways. Looks similar to the logistic, but you can see if I change the shape parameter, say to like one, you'll see that the, the shape of the curve, you know, looks a little more. That's basically Ricker. Um, if I change this to 0 0.5, you can see that the steepness of the curve changes. Uh, it kind of moves a little more towards the lower stock size. I can change that to 0.1, and you can see we've got different forms. So it's a very flexible model, very flexible model. 
um, we can change this to like three and you can really see that peak really move over. So that is, let's just talk about it with, with two. We'll start with two, shape parameter, which is a common one to start with. Okay, what is this? Uh, there's our data. Now we need to run our NLS, right? Let's run our NLS. So let's just, I'm just actually going to grab it from this one. Here's our NLS. Here's our R data. We're going to say here's our A times N. So here's our form here. But you notice that our A now, this is this R divided by P thing. So we have to do, I'm just going to call this C. This is, we want to estimate both A and C at this time. And we want to raise this to the power of C. And there we go. Let's just make this 50. And now C equals, we'll start with 10. What is this, again, what is this doing? We're looking at this data, the scattery data, black dots. We want to estimate A and C and B. Here's C again. And we're giving NLS some starting values to try and optimize this problem, to try and fit this data. So I'm going to run this, okay, and we're going to run our prediction. Not bad, not bad. And if we look at NLS, you'll see that, I guess pretty close, number A is our R term, 0.1. Again, carrying capacity got pretty close, C is 2.5, so not bad. Okay, so that was fitting a Pelotomlinson curve. All right, the next model to try is the Ricker curve, or Ricker model. Oh, we're gonna borrow these things again here. We have R, we have K, and we have a new term here called B. I'm just going to make this 0 0.1. This is the exponential, exponential parameter. And the form of the function, I'm just going to grab this. In fact, I'll just grab all of this here, down here. Our recruits are go is going to look something like this. We just have R times N. This is a very popular form. R times N. N times the exponent. Minus B times N. So I can just delete this. We don't need K here. All right, so let's go ahead and make a Ricker function. There we go. Starts off high, comes back down. So what's going on, right? So R and N, so right away we're starting off when the uh, stock size is small. This term dominates, but eventually as n gets bigger, this negative exponential dominates, which is why we have this exponential drop off here, right? Uh, so let's go ahead and plot stock size. Oh, we just plotted that. Let's make some noisy data from this. There we go. Uh, boy, that's really noisy data. We're going to go ahead and maybe reduce this here. So let's do 0 0.1 standard deviation of 0 0.1 and try that there we go so maybe the other one was just a little too noisy so we're gonna mess with it a little bit and then we're gonna do our NLS so let's just go back up here and let's borrow this NLS line and we have to respecify it so we're just going to have, again, A times N. 
again that's that holdover all the way from that exponential and now we're going to have from the original exponential model we're going to have exponent times exponent of negative b times n all right so this a is now a replacement for this r in this term here and this b here is a replacement for just so happens to be lowercase b it's often how it's specified so i'm just going to change this down here to we're just fitting two terms and so we're going to run this one okay and let's go ahead and run our prediction and there's our fit there's our fit okay great so again, we can come up here and you can see how the variation changes, how the fit changes a little bit, how someone might fit a Ricker curve even to this uh, really, really noisy data. All right, the last one we're going to mess with is called the Beverton Holt curve. And there's a lot of the same things in it. We're going to grab this from Ricker. So we have an R, we have a B, we don't have, yeah, it's basically the same thing, and this is what, how it's specified. Grab these two lines. So we have R times N, and we no longer have, I'm going to put these in parentheses, Now we're going to divide by 1 plus b times n. And if you've seen this before, if you've ever done Michaelis-Menten, this looks really similar to that. There is our stock recruits curve. So this one doesn't have like a nice peak in it. It just says that stock size keeps going up. Recruits just, you know, they just keep going up. There's no hump in it. No hump in it. So let's go ahead and fit this. No, oh, we want to, that would be easy to fit because it's such a smooth curve, but let's now add some variation. Maybe just our data. All right, so there's our, there's our variation. And let's now do our NLS. So again, right, we have to re-specify this. We have a times n, where a is just a placeholder for our r term in here, divided by 1 plus b, in this case, b times n. So again, remember when we're specifying our model, a, right, so this is the actual the form of the model. We want to estimate R and we want to estimate B. Well, we're, these are the terms that, that uh, NLS is going to estimate. A is really going to be our R term. B is going to be our little B term. And we're saying start guessing A and B to estimate these terms here and run the NLS. When we run NLS, you'll see that A is pretty close to what R is. B is pretty close to what B is. And so our predictions should be pretty decent. It is. There it is. In fact, we can come back here and maybe add a lot more variation, and you'll see that sometimes things break down. Well, it still does an okay job. All right, so what we just did is we took you through some basic growth forms that you're going to run into in fisheries. But Really what happens is that you go out and you collect some stock data and you have some recruit data and you try and fit one of these curves. And so we kind of showed you how to do a fit for one of these curves and what terms might be important. But let's go ahead and do an example. Let's do an example. So let's go ahead. We're going to show you an example of digitizing data. So we're going to have you require digitize. Run that. And if you don't have digitize, you're just going to come up here to tools, and you're going to do install packages, and you're going to type 
digitize. There it is right there. Make sure install dependencies there and go ahead and install. Hit install and then type this require and you should be ready to go. And I'm going to go ahead and set my working directory. I'll show you this here. Tools, choose my directory. I'm going to choose a directory where I've got here, where I've got an image that I want to bring in. Let me show you how this is done. I'm going to just call this thing dig. Digitize a, a PNG that I made. This is just a screenshot I called Miller. It's a PNG from Chapter 17 Miller that you brought in, that you read. Hit run, and there it is. There is a, a figure that we're pulling in, and the question is, how do we go ahead and get this stock versus recruit data into R so that we can analyze it? So the first thing you do when you do digitize is calibrate the system. We have to click in order X1, X2, Y1, Y2. So X1 is the X origin. Go ahead and click that. Our X2 is going to be the extent over here. All right. And then we have to click on Y1, which is going to be our origin for our Y value. And then Y2 is right up here at 22. OK. What is the return of X1? What's the actual value at X1? Well, that's 0. What is the return of X2? That is 2.8. What is the return of Y1? Well, Y1 is 0. And the return of Y2 is 22. All right, now it's going to say, click all the data. All right, don't hit escape. Once you're all done, you're going to hit finish up here. So let's go through and just click these things. There, we got that one, that one, that one. So what we're doing now is we are clicking on the screen here. And since we calibrated our axes of our X and Y, we are now giving R the data from this graph. And it's going to return you the calibrated X and Y data, or stock spawning data. I think I've clicked all of these. I've got to be careful and remember where you were. And I think I'm going to go ahead and hit finish now. Yeah, and I'll see. Oh, looks like I missed one. I missed one. That's OK. For the purposes of this exercise, you know, you can make sure that you click it. All right, so we're going to digitize those things. Um, and now if I look at dig, oops, you'll see here's all my points. Here's my x values. Here's my y values. The spawning stock versus recruits. So if we uh, um, come over here and say, first what I'm actually going to do is uh, go ahead and order these. I'm just going to order them according to their x values. You see they're out of um, out of order here. So I'm just going to do dig order. Actually, I'll just do it this way. If you type the order of dig column one, that's the x ones, it's going to give you an index of which one should be first, which one should be second, according to their x value. Then if we do dig, so if I do that sort of same thing, use it as an index, bracket, comma, now they're in order. Now they're in order. So I'm just going to take this thing and say this is dig. And I've ordered it. Dig. Right? So if I plot dig, there's my data. There it is. Ripped it right off the plot. Let's go ahead and make our spawning stock SS equals dig dollar sign X. That's our X values. And our group recruits dig dollar sign y 
And now let's just plot SS GR XLIM equals C 0 to 2.8 and YLIM equals C 0 to 22 XLAB equals spawning stock YLAB equals zero group recruits and run this so this is the data except for that one that was sitting right there but that's okay it shouldn't be that big of a deal for our exercise in this case so let's now um oh i'm gonna make a function called new x I'm just going to make a function from 0 to 3, length equals 50. And that's going to be a new spawning stock x that we predict our data over. You'll see how we use it in just a second. But let's first go around here and say, let's try an exponential fit to this data. Let's try it. So our exponential fit to NLS exponential NLS is going to be our NLS. What is our response? It's going to be GR. We're trying to fit these recruits, GR, to A times spawning stock plus zero. We're going to force this thing to go through zero. We're going to force it to go through uh, the intercept to go through zero. So remember, this is way back to our first example of a, of a exponential fit or exponential model and we're going to give it the start starting values equals list a equals one so we're just estimating one parameter here which is the slope of the line and we're going to force it through zero okay let's see what happens here okay so our exponential nls all right slope is 4.514 that's our nonlinear regression although it's gonna look a lot like a linear line and now we're gonna make an exponential prediction predict our XP and LS and we want to predict on new data so our new data is gonna be our new X here so our new data is gonna be a list where SS equals new X. Remember now, when we look at this thing, this, this model here says that there's something called SS in here. So if we give predict a list of data that we call SS, that's what's going on in here. It's gonna take what is ever in new X, which is a sequence from zero to three, and it's gonna push it into this equation and give us GR after it's estimated A. That's what, that is, that's what this is gonna do. XP pred. So we're going to predict this. Okay. Now we're going to put these lines on here. New X. New X. Expected prediction. Color equals blue. Line weight equals two. Ta-da, okay, that's the fit. Doesn't look so great, but let's move on. That's the exponential fit. What about the logistic fit? So let's just borrow this thing, take all this, and we're just gonna copy this. We already know how to, we're just gonna edit this for our own thing, so we're just gonna call this our logistic NLS. Now we're gonna have our growth rate, not this A times SS anymore. We're gonna have A times SS times 
1 minus spawning stock divided by B. Remember, that's with our carrying capacity. This equals A and B equals 1. So that's what we're going to run. Now we're going to have our log of our logistic prediction. And this is going to be based on our NLS here, our logistic NLS. Our new data is going to be the same. And then we're going to do our new line on here. This is going to be logistic prediction. And it's not going to be blue, it's going to be red. So here we go. Let's make sure this thing works. Yep. So log and ls. Okay, there's our two terms. Let's see how well these things fit. There is the logistic prediction. Okay, is that better or worse? Well, it's probably a little better. All right, let's now try the Ricker fit. Why not? And I'm just going to borrow this, and we're going to edit it. Our Ricker NLS. Remember, we've got to have our Ricker form in here now, which is this times now the E exponent negative B times SS. Remember that? That was the Ricker form. Oh, we don't need the zero in here, although I guess it didn't really matter. Don't need the zero. Start with A1, B1. Make sure this works. This is a Ricker fit, right? Our Ricker prediction. It's not our Ricker NLS. Our new data yeah, is the same. We're going to make this color, what are we going to make it? Let's make it green. So there's our Ricker fit. Okay. All right. Is that any better? We'll see. Let's do one more. Covered in Holt. Again, we're just going to copy this and use it for our own purposes. Covered and Holt NLS. What's that form again? Parentheses around A times SS. Ha ha. Okay. One plus B times SS. That's our Bevered and Holt form. This is going to be our prediction based on lines, and this is now going to be black. Okay, so that is four different models that are attempting to fit the same data um, that really was this data. And this one, you know, this, they picked Ricker to show here, and you can see that it's uh, it's pretty similar to the one that we had. You know, we're missing one point in here, but the you know, the curve looks pretty similar. And one of the questions that comes up is to say, well, you know, this this isn't quite as obvious as uh, the examples we were showing before, where it was obvious that that curve was fitting it better and better. Now you've got all these points. How you decide? which one is actually better? What's the, what is the better fit? There is a way to do that. Uh, it's called the uh, Akaki parameter. And if you want to know something more about that, you can go to this website. All right, there you go. Model selection with AICs. And uh, this is a nice video that they go through what that... Uh, they go through the AIC selection process. For now, I'm going to just paste this in the uh, code here. There's one for you to check out. But we can require this function, this library here, this AIC model average. 
And if you don't have that, you could just go to uh, Tools, Install Packages, type AIC Model Average, right? Make sure you install all the dependencies. And then you can use a function called AIC Table. And what that involves is creating a model list. So what's the list of the models that we ran here from NLS? Well, there's EXP, oops, XP NLS, our logistic NLS, our Richter NLS, and our Bevard and Holt NLS, and our model names equals C exponential logistic Ricker Beverton Holt. All right, so let's run those two things. And then we're just going to run one function here, which is called AIC tab, which is AIC table. So it's going to compare models and tells us which is the best one, the best fit. There's model list, model names, and we want to do the second dot ord. Second ord gives you going to give you the corrected AIC value. Again, go back to this video and watch it. Um, it'll tell you what is, that is about. Go ahead and run this. And so here's our Ricker model. Here's our Beverton and Holt, our logistic, and our exponential. Our AIC values actually want to look for the lowest one, so our best fit is the Ricker model, but it's probably not all that different than the Beverton Holt model here. It actually doesn't fit it all much better, so you want to look at the Delta AIC. Logistic and exponential, they don't do nearly as well. This weight here, this uh, weight, the higher this value is, the more likely this is the correct model out of the four models that you actually have. So the exponential is basically it's saying this one's definitely not correct. That's this blue line. That's just wrong. Um, you have a 17% chance that the logistic model, which is this red one, is correct. A 31% chance that the Beverton Holt model, this black one, is correct. And a 52% chance that the Ricker model is correct. So, okay, the Ricker model edges out, but there's only one in two chance that it, out of these four that it's actually the correct model. And this turns out to be important when you're looking at spawning stock uh, versus recruits is this data is often very messy and sometimes it's hard to come to terms with which of these curves you should actually use to fit. But in any case, we've gone through uh, several different types of growth curves and what their functional forms are like, how to go about fitting them, and then possibly how to compare them um, given some data that we've ripped from a figure. All right, thank you.